What's up guys, how's it going? It is Matt here. So today I'm gonna to be doing a video about the isosceles stance versus the weaver stance. Now I've covered this before in many of my other videos, several of my other videos, but I still have people that ask me about this and I see a lot of videos out there where people specifically tell you that the only good stance is the isosceles stance, also known as the combat stance. So I wanna teach you both of these stances and try to help you figure out which one works best for you. Let's get into it. Now, there are two types of stances. You guys heard it, isosceles and the weaver stance. So the most common stance that we use today, which is taught by most instructors today, is called the isosceles stance. Basically, you directly face the target. You directly face your target. Your toes are pretty much facing the target. You might bring your right foot back just a tiny bit, but not much. But your toes are directly facing the target. Your body is completely squared off the target. And when you pull your firearm out, this has been cleared part of the video. When you pull your firearm out, you push your arms directly out and present them right there with your arms are straight like this, okay? And that is commonly known as the, is the isosceles stance, also what we call it in the military, the combat stance, all right? What the benefits of the isosceles stance is it's very easy to get into and it's very easy to move from, but most important, and this is where it comes very important and you'll find out why here in a minute, it's the combat stance. The reason it's the combat stance is because if you're wearing body armor, right? If you're wearing body armor, you, there's usually a plate in the front and a plate in the back and the sides are usually completely unprotected. So if you find yourself in a fight, you need to expose the plates to the target so if you do get shot at your plates will help deflect those those rounds so it's well the combat stance it's easy to move in and out it's easy to move around and get things done the only downside to it is it's not very comfortable for a lot of people and they feel very unstable now we're moving on to the weaver stance the weaver stance is a little bit different First things first, the camera is the target. So in the isosceles stance, my toes are directly lined up to the actual target. Whereas the weaver stance, I now have to take my toes and I have to shift them pretty much at a 45 degree angle, this direction. Now for all people that freak out when I put my gun around here, um, you gotta understand something. This is my basement. I am six foot two and the, the grass line starts up there. So all around here, yeah, that's all dirt. So I'd have to go through reinforced concrete and dirt. So um, this is a very safe direction. The old open spot over there is my garage door. So I don't point it that direction. I point it this direction because it's safe. I point it that direction, it's safe. It's that way and that way because all those directions are safe. So there's your little disclaimer out there. But anyway, so the weaver stance, what's different about the weaver stance from the isosceles stance is instead of having my toes pointing at the target, I'm pointing them at a 45 degree angle. I'm looking over here. My body is facing this direction, but the target is over here. Then what I do is I put my front, forward, my front foot forward and my back foot back, and I'll show you a little distant shot. And the difference is, is I'm aiming at this target over here. Now you start with your thumbs up when you're doing the weaver. You start with your thumbs up like this, and then you would cross your thumbs just like this. This is the weaver grip. Now, if you, Colonel Cooper taught you very well, he liked to teach with the thumbs up, but it goes right there just like that, all right? That right there would be what Jeff Cooper used to teach as the grip. If you watch a lot of videos, he talks all about how much he loves the weaver. That right there would be the weaver grip is what he would prefer for the weaver grip. But anyway, your feet are that way, the target's this way, you point the gun this way, your thumbs up, and this one comes, and the difference between the isosceles and the weaver is one, my toes are pointing a different direction, and look at my arms. They are not fully extended, they are slightly bent. This hand is pushing forward, whereas this hand is pulling back to stabilize this platform, all right? Just like that. That right there would be the weaver stance. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the camera back so you can take a closer look so you can actually see my footwork as well. Here I am, my other side of the grad, once again, pointing in a straight direction. Isosceles stance, my toes are lined up to the target. I put my right foot back just a little bit. My toes are lined up to the target like that. When you pull the pistol out, it comes straight out like this and you're pointing it straight at the target. Your arms are pretty much straight, not fully locked at the elbows. That right there would be the isosceles stance, which would have the front where the plate would be, also known as the combat stance, 
facing the enemy. It allows you to move to the target quickly. It allows you to make quick adjustments to shift if you need to. So the combat stance, the isosceles stance is a great stance. When it comes to the weaver, it's different. Once again, I'm facing the target over here. My toes are now pointed in this direction. My toes are pointed in a different direction. The target is over here. So the same draw, except I come up, I shift my body like this, set up that thumb grip, and I'm facing the target this way. My toes are not pointed at the target. And there's, once again, there is that funky shape of the arms that a lot of people think looks funky. That right there would be the weaver stance. Now you can also do modified, where you turn your feet towards the target a little bit more, and you straighten this arm out like that. Or there's other people that find different positions where it's a little bit more comfortable for them. Once again, I'm pushing forward with this hand and I'm pulling back with this hand. So that's that classic push-pull that you hear so many instructors talking about. So those two right there are the isosceles and the weaver stance. Now, when the weaver stance came out, okay, Mr. Weaver, what he was trying to do, once again, this has been completely cleared, all right? In this state, I do not have an AR-15, all right? This is the state of Connecticut. The only AR-15s available are called others. There's kind of mutants with weird barrel lengths and weird stocks and that are fixed and stuff like that. Not exactly what I call a good quality AR-15. So for the purposes of this, I'll be using this hunting rifle and it's fully cleared, 100% cleared. All I got is my extra rounds right here on the buttstock, but the bolt completely cleared. And once again, pointing in a safe direction. Now, what Mr. Weaver was trying to do was he was trying to bring rifle marksmanship, military rifle marksmanship to the pistol platform when he created the Weaver stance. Basically, rifle marksmanship, the stance it used for the standing stance, and like I said, I'm right-handed, all right, but I'm left-eye dominant, so Marine Corps taught me how to shoot long guns left-handed, so the people who think this is kind of weird, this is how it works for me, all right? So, the standard combat stance for military is something we've had to develop, and that was so we'd expose nothing but our plates to the threat. And that is, once again, you're squaring off your body, you bend your knees, and you kind of put your butt down, and you're putting your weight down, your center, your center of gravity is, gravity is a little bit lower. And you, we literally put the stock in our chest, all right, because you have a plate there. You know, if you have armor on, there's a mix between a plate and stuff there. So if you shoot here, this is going to come flying off your armor. It won't be the most accurate. We literally put the buck stock right here into our chest. And this right here would be the combat stance. We call it the combat groucho. From here, our feet basically take all the shock where our upper body look, works like a turn. So I can move at the same time moving forward or different directions. And this is like a turn where I can shift it. So this is the standard combat stance for a rifle. Mr. Weaver was trying to bring the, the marksmanship stance for rifle from the military the marksmanship stance from the military, and they were trying to bring that to pistol shooting. What's the difference? Once again, my feet are away from the target. My target's over here. My feet are pointed this direction now. My body is literally almost sideways to the target. My shoulder is facing the target. The rifle, you would take it like this, put it up in the little pocket of your shoulder, bring it down, and your elbows are down like this, locked arms. We'd use a sling. Call that loop so I gotta tighten this up if I were gonna use the stance a little bit so it'd be tighter. That right there would be the combat marksman stance or the rifle marksmanship stance when it comes to the military qualifications. Literally, my, bi my body is almost sideways, right? You see that? My body is almost sideways. My elbow's done. I'm not chicken winging it. And I'm this direction. Once again, my toes are faced that direction. In combat, you cannot use a stance like that because you cannot move efficiently and you would be exposing your sides which are not protected by our body armor so we had to adjust it so our body is square to the target right putting that in the center it goes from all the way over here in the pocket to the center see the big difference and that right there would be the combat stance so i hope this helps guys a lot of people are trying to figure out which stance would be the better shooting stance and which one is better. Um, honestly, they are both great stances. Each has their pros and each has their cons. The standard isosceles stance, also known as the combat stance, is very easy and quick to get into. You can move quicker with it, which is a good thing. That's why competition shooters like to use it. That's why a lot of people teach it nowadays. Whereas the weaver stance, to a lot of people, to most people who haven't been shooting a long time, the weaver stance, feels more like 
a stable platform for shooting. Feels like a much more stable platform for shooting for them. And there's a lot of people with their different bone structures, whether it's smaller shoulders, narrower shoulders, or whatever, that they just can't get them, their arms in a good position when they go to the isosceles stance. So I teach them the weaver, I help modify their weaver stance so they can feel more comfortable when they're shooting, right? So those are the two stances. So I hope this helps guys. Choose which one works best for you. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about me. And remember guys, it's our responsibility to take care of each other and protect each other. Peace.